Hey, it's Chris from Street Fire. With all of the excitement this past year about alternative fuel vehicles, there's one technology in particular that's caught our attention lately, hydrogen. So last weekend, we came out to the end of the 2008 Hydrogen Road Tour to check out a historic cross-country trek of a fleet of these vehicles. The tour basically consisted of nine manufacturers that spent two weeks testing their vehicles through 18 states and 31 stops. It's one of the most extensive public exhibitions of hydrogen technology ever. Biofuels are still hydrocarbon based and basically represent a lesser of two evils compared to oil. Everyone talks about hydrogen being this ultimate long-term solution, but they see it being years down the road. Does it work today? If so, how does it actually work in a vehicle? So to answer that question, we turn to one of Volkswagen's lead engineers from their Tiguan High Motion program. So efficiency of a gas engine, we were talking about earlier, is 24% is probably like the high end, right, of what you can see out of a regular internal combustion engine. Maximum theoretical efficiency. What is, what's the efficiency on a fuel cell? We're seeing right now uh, as, as high as 82% uh, efficiency. And, and the rest is that lost heat energy. The lost heat, lost heat. The fuel cell itself has no internal moving parts. So you're not going to have uh, inefficiencies due to kinetic motion and having to reverse a piston or having to ch uh, basically a loss of something rubbing against something. Yeah. However, we do have support devices. We have a compressor, as I mentioned earlier, on the sound. We also have uh, uh, some water pumps and so forth, which are electrically controlled. Yeah. The electric motors are 80, 90, 95% efficiencies on those devices, but they are a draw, essentially a parasitic load, if you will. Yep. So it's not 100% efficient. We're never, ever going to get 100%. No. But, but these are the best way to get to the most efficient system we know of and to get those 60 plus mile per gallon equivalent ranges. The gasoline version of this car gets 24 miles per gallon. Wow. We get 60. What is this way? Uh, this trip is about 4,200, 4,300 pounds. Oh, so that is, that's, a, that's a lot heavier than a Prius that's, that's a little heavier, yeah, it's a heavier car. Now, what about the weight of all this versus a, uh, this would probably be like a four-cylinder turbo or the or the V6 motor this in this? This weighs about 400 pounds more. Oh, weighs more than Yeah, there's more, and we actually get better fuel, fuel economy. The only two byproducts are water and heat, that's it. And so you're, in your dissociation reaction, there's a certain amount of heat yeah. that actually is evolved. From, from the reaction. But a fuel cell requires a temperature range, 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, to be optimally efficient. Huh. So we actually have a large radiator, very much like the radiator you have in a car. And then we also we have two more radiators. Their purpose is just to cool the electric motor. So first thing I notice is that there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of noise. Yeah. Is it AC and, well, or what are we, or is that the bus in front of us? No. Nope. What you're hearing right now, is I, I turn the AC off so okay. that you're not hearing any of the wind noise associated with that. We have an air compressor. The purpose of the air compressor is to actually put oxygen or air, if you will, through the stack. We need oxygen and hydrogen to complete the reaction. So since air we breathe is only 21% oxygen, we push right. about five to seven times the amount of air through to get it a ratio of nearly one to one, a little greater. Yeah. So that what you're hearing is just an air compressor. This is an electrochemical process. Essentially just dissociates the hydrogen, that dissociation freeze electrons, making you a current. And then those those protons that are part of the process, the production the of that process, product. leftover, yeah. Right. Essentially just pass through the membrane selectively, nothing else will pass through, and recombine with oxygen on their side making water. That's it. Plain and simple. The only byproduct of this entire process is water. You can drink the water. You can actually go to the tailpipe, put your hand under it, and, and drink the water. It's a little bit bitter, but I've actually drank it and put it, put it in about half a cup, put some tang in it, and drank it. So this is a normal transmission or not? Yes, it is. Uh, well, let me rephrase Where that. am I going anyways? Make, make a right turn. It's a normal electric motor. There is no transmission like you think of. Oh, okay. It's a direct drive electric motor. Okay. So we're never going to feel a shift? Nope. You're actually going to feel no shifting whatsoever all the way up to your full speed. You know what's really neat about this is that I don't feel compression braking. When I let off the throttle, Right, if you just you know how normal you let off the throttle, you get that compression breaking as the motor is is that. doing that. You don't feel that, which is actually kind of odd. There's been times I'll kind of snap off the throttle and expect to feel that. We have a single battery about the size of a hybrid. The battery would be in most Prius type vehicles. Right. And that battery gives us the off-the-line current that we need, off-the-line amperage that we need to actually go off for, except for acceleration. Okay. Uh, after that, though, the fuel cell essentially transitions to where it's taking over more and more of the operation. At above about 20 to 30 miles per hour, it's complete fuel cell. This is an electric hybrid, is the best way to think of it. So is horsepower an accurate way to really think about these cars, or should it be kilowatt, should it be torque? What, what's, the, what's the measurement of power that makes most sense? Well, we actually use both. Uh, generally, for most people, we actually do tell the horsepower. In this vehicle, for example, 109 horsepower. 
Is, is that just so I can relate it back to yes, a gas engine? really just so you can relate. It's a conversion factor. Okay. Uh, and in reality, I mean, it's a 100 kilowatt system, which equates 109 horsepower. But one of the, a lot of people go, that's just, that's not much horsepower. Mm -hmm. They're used to much bigger Four numbers. 500. But we have almost 200 pound-feet of torque. That electric motor makes up that big difference in torque that you have with an equivalent horsepower gasoline motor. What's the, so what's the range on this thing? This, this car, pull. because of the small tanks, we didn't want to get big old tanks in the back. We wanted to limit any encroachment on the passenger area. So we put smaller tanks than we actually could have, about 120, 140 mile range. So but we refuel with hydrogen. Five to 10 minutes, we go again. There's no recharge cycle. There's no waiting for you know, for anything to, you know, to charge up. We just put it in like a regular gasoline and we go again. All right, you want to go to Tijuana?